Hey, what's up reefers? Welcome to almost the last episode of this 146 gallon budget build. Now, I don't mean I'm gonna stop doing update on this tank, but rather that the equipment part is almost done. And before I show you the final step, cycling this tank, I wanna show you how the tank looks right now. And keep in mind, I've only really started to stock this tank for two weeks with the corals I have in the 45 gallon tank. I just moved some of the corals up here. I did not buy anything new yet. So imagine what you could do when you have the freedom to pick and choose what you add to this tank and let your creativity go wild. Hey guys, here's a sneak peek at the 10 gallon budget reef a couple weeks down the road. Basically, I'm starting to stock the tank and it's only been two weeks, but I've been moving a lot of corals from the 45 gallon tank downstairs to this 10 gallon budget built. And you'll see this wire right here because I'm trying to make sure the temperature's on track and constant and so far so good. So the heater is doing a good job. But in terms of livestock, I've been sticking mostly to the Euphelia family because they're pretty hardy and they're really colorful. And furthermore, they expand. So they take up the excess room a lot. It makes the tank looks a lot more filled in. So right here, we got my favorite core, the frog spawn. And down here, we got some gold torch. We got two different types. We got the holy grail and we got the Aussie Gold Torch. And to add a splash of color, we got some different Zoas here and we got some Bally Mini Max carpet and then that over there. In terms of livestock, I have a really unique looking coral banner shrimp. The coloration is really unique, but of course it's hiding right now, so I can't really show you, so stay put. And swinging over here, we got some softies. We got a uh, green tree letter and we got the candy cane. The kryptonite candy cane that was struggling in a 45 gallon tank. I move it up here and slowly recovering. So this is a quick sneak peek of the 10 gallon budget tank. A result like this is easily achievable because all these corals are relatively easy and beginner friendly. Now with that said, let's take a look at the cycling process and see how I got to this point. Eh? Super excited because the 10 gallon tank is cycled. It is ready for livestock. Now I'm jumping a little bit ahead of myself. What is cycling? Let me explain. So basically when your tank first get water into it, it is not ready for fish or coral yet. You need to go through a process called cycling, establishing a bacteria colony that will break down the ammonia from your livestock, namely like fish. That when they poop, they create ammonia. We'll need to break that down into nitrite and then into nitrate. Nitrate being the least harmful of the three. There are many, many instructions online, so I'm not gonna repeat it. I'm just gonna let you know what my process is. In my case, I do things slightly differently, and this may be a case where you should do what I say, but not so much what I do. However, this has been working for me. So in a nutshell, really quickly, how to cycle a tank is essentially use a ammonia source, whether it's the uh, liquid ammonia that I use from Dr. Tim, or you buy a shrimp just like one shrimp from the seafood aisle of your supermarket and you drop into the tank. Now the shrimp method is one of the um, tried and true method. Essentially you buy just like one raw shrimp, leave it in the tank for about three days. Once it starts rotting, once it starts smelling bad, you pull it out. That's when you know you have ammonia in the tank. And that ammonia is gonna kickstart the whole cycling process. Bacteria is gonna start breaking down ammonia, creating nitrite, which is still harmful to fish. And then it's gonna get converted into nitrate, which is not as harmful to fish. Now in terms of nitrate, depending on the type of corals you keep in your tank, you may want little to no nitrate, or you may want a little bit more nitrate, for example, like, uh, soft corals, they seem to like nitrate as well as clam. You have clam, they seem to suck it all up. So usually people keep the main light off because with the light on, it's gonna grow algae like what I have here. But for me, because I'm so lazy, I don't like to do water tests, especially ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. I keep the light on and see what kind of algae is growing as an indicator of the cycling process. Now disclaimer, this is just something I picked up along the way many, many years ago. I think somebody told me about it and that seems to be true for the number of aquariums that I've been setting up. But of course, there are many, many different ways of doing it. The proper way these days seems to be you check for your ammonia level, your nitrate level, and your nitrate level. When you notice a spike in ammonia after a couple days, you know it's cycling starting. And then you'll see a spike in nitrate. And then you'll see a growth in nitrate, and then it kind of like level out. And when the nitrate stays around a steady number, for example, 5 ppm, 20 ppm, then you know the cycle is probably finished. However, in my case, I like to leave the light on simply because I like to look at a tank full of water. I'm kind of weird like that. Another side benefit I see is the different type of algae that shows up. There's two main types that I see. The first type of algae that's gonna show up is brown diatom across the sand bed. It's just kind of rusted color. It's like a dusting 
across all the sand. When they show up, I'm super happy because I know that the cycling is underway. And then in about a week or so, I'll notice that the brown tired hum will disappear and in place of it, we'll get all these more complex green hair algae like I have right here. And this is gonna take off. And these algae basically just sucks up all the nitrate and just grow and grow and grow, burning up all the excess nutrient locked in the system. And that's what's happening right here. Eventually, the growth of them is gonna cap off, at least again in my case, and I know that, okay, tank is ready. Uh, at this point, I will start introducing a cleanup crew. I wanna add just enough that it maintains this level, it doesn't get any worse. Because if the cleanup crew can mold down all these algae within like half a day, then I know that they're gonna starve because the amount of food is not sustainable for the cleanup crew that I add. So for example, for this 10 gallon tank, I may do maybe like three choker snails, uh, two seraph snails, and then maybe two scarlet hermit for this whole tank and start it off there. If the hair algae goes really bad, I may add one Mexican turbo snails and just kind of let, let it take care of all the hair algae and then I'll move the Mexican turbo to the 45 gallon tank downstairs. So at this point, this tank actually took a while to cycle. I think it took me about six weeks. I was just really patient with it. I was traveling anyways. Uh, but usually I think like a tank this size can probably get cycled in three to four weeks. I think that's, uh, that's when I would normally see green algae. I think in this case, I did not dose enough of the liquid ammonia or it may have expired. Did they even expire? But it was not until I start dropping all these um, marine pure spheres from my 45 gallon tank that the whole process really got jump start. So maybe 10 years ago, some people are still cycling tank with uh, damsels. But that's probably a bad idea because I mean, it's just bad for the fish. Um, the ammonia usually burn the fish gill and just not a good thing. Uh, so I would advise against cycling a new tank with, uh, with fish, usually damsels or clownfish. And besides liquid ammonia, I know like sometimes people can just throw in live rocks from an established tank and stuff like that to jump off the cycle. But the whole, the whole idea is the same. Basically you want to introduce ammonia into this new tank to start building a bacteria colony. And I know there are like products out there that's like liquid bacteria that supposedly help you instant cycle the tank. Honestly, I have never tried it. I'm kind of like a more old school guy. I'm not usually patient, but when it comes to like cycling a tank, I'm surprisingly patient. So I have no issue just looking at a tank like this with no livestock. Just to reiterate, usually people cycle without the lights. Uh, this way they avoid any algae issue like the one I have. But for me, for whatever reason, I don't mind. I like to look at the water movements in a, in a bare tank, and I would like to see the algae giving me indication of the step of cycling I'm in right now. So every single time I cycle, I have the light on, but that is not normal practice. Usually people turn off the light and just test the water to make sure everything is good. Again, ammonia spike, nitrate spike, and then nitrate kind of like tapered off and stabilized. That's when you know you are good to go. Usually about three to six weeks, larger aquarium may take a little bit longer. All right guys, I hope this series has been helpful. Basically, the tank is set up ready to go. And this is where the budget part ends. Basically, with $146, you're able to get a 10 gallon tank up and running that is coral and fish ready, and it is a respectable system. From this point forward, even though I'll still call this the $146 budget tank built, all these other equipment that I may add on will be optional. You have what you need to have a successful reef tank, but I may start adding some equipment that will make your life easier. Now with livestock, sky's the limit, you can go as cheap as you want, meaning that you could maybe get some frags of Xenia and just have a 10 foot Xenia, GSP, uh, uh, softies that are low budget or completely free. And of course you can go the other route where sky is the limit. So it's really up to you which way you wanna go. However, with $146, you have the tank where you can make these choices. Now that I have this tank up and running, for the next couple months, I'm gonna start stocking this tank and make this tank look as mature as possible, even though this tank is really new. And I'll be sharing some tips that I picked up along the way on how I'll be able to achieve that. Get that mature tank look when the tank is still really young. All right guys, I hope you like this video and find this video, especially the series, helpful. If so, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and let me know which part is your favorite, and I'll see you next week. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta tell them which one. Moki, are you getting some uh, seahorses?